Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Good morning, everyone. Well, okay, depending on what time you're watching this and where you live, it might be morning or it might not be, but it is pretty early for me. In fact, I just had my first cup of coffee, and of course, I looked at my phone and was like, goodness gracious, yet another spoiler has come out. Or should I again say, potential spoiler. These have not been confirmed, but this looks pretty legitimate, though we'll get to the picture here in a bit. Anyways... Junji the Midnight Sky. Yeah, this card has already been broken in a lot of different ways. That did not take long at all. So I'm going to take you through what this new potential spoiler from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty does, how it can be broken, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Again, a disclaimer. This is a potential spoiler. So please take everything in this episode with a grain of salt and come up with your own conclusions. Is this a real card? Is it not? Should Mitch hold back on the coffee for a bit because he's talking too fast this morning? I don't know. Anyways, let's jump into it. So early this morning on Reddit, this image was posted. And yeah, I, I, I'm i not sure if, if the people posting these images are just trying to one-up each other with, you know, blurrier and blurrier images. I'm not sure what all that is about, but... Yeah, th this image is quite grainy. Congratulations, y you did it. Y you made a very, very hard to read image, but just, just grainy enough so we actually can read it. And actually, that's why I'm going to make a, you know, another custom card on mtg.design, a fantastic website if you want to make custom cards. And here we go. So here is the much easier to read and discuss version with Junji the Midnight Sky. This is a 5-5 dragon spirit with flying and menace that costs three black black. It has, when it dies, choose one. Each bond discards two cards and loses two life, or put target non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, you lose two life. So this potential spoiler essentially confirms to me that each of the monocolored dragons that we're going to be seeing in this set essentially have the same template where when they die, we get to choose one of two effects. This is a lot like the original dragons of Kamigawa, where when they died, we actually didn't get to choose an effect, but we did have a death trigger. Regardless, each of the choices on this commander are incredibly impactful. First off, each opponent discarding two cards and losing two life is very brutal. Essentially, again, in a game of commander where you've got three opponents, that's what, six life in total and six cards discarded in total? And yeah, if you've got ways to use and abuse this death trigger by maybe getting this commander back over and over again and sacrificing it and making people discard cards and lose life, you can drain your opponents for a ton and make sure that they essentially have no hand. So I can definitely see this commander being built in somewhat of a controlly way if that's the way that you want to go. But actually, that's not the part of this card that is broken. It's actually the other choice. Put target non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, you lose two life. So basically, reanimate any non-dragon creature from a graveyard for the small cost of two life. Keep in mind that's any graveyard, including your opponent's creatures, which, yeah, that could definitely come into play. Regardless, the way to break it probably involves your own cards, and actually, in that way, it's pretty easy to break this thing open, though with a caveat. So let's jump into that now. So Junji essentially goes infinite with literally any clone. It doesn't matter if it's the original clone or Glass Bolt Mimic or Phantasmal Image. Whatever clone you want, it is going infinite with. Let's take a look at just Junji and then the clone next to each other to see how this actually works. 
Now to have this combo with a caveat work, you need Junji in play and a clone in your hand. Then you simply just play clone and have it enter the battlefield as a copy of Junji. Because of the legend rule, you're going to have to get rid of one of them, so you get rid of the clone, which is going to hit your graveyard and its death trigger is going to happen, so you choose one of them. So of course you're going to choose to put target non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control and you lose two life. And the creature that you're going to choose is not a dragon at all, but it is clone because it's a shapeshifter in your graveyard, so you can pick that, even though it was just a dragon. So clone comes back into play, and then you have it become a copy of Junji again, which then it's going to have the exact same thing happen. Legend rule applies, it dies, death trigger happens, and you decide to lose to life and bring it back. Now, obviously, again, there is a caveat to this being an infinite loop because, you know, every single time you do this, you are losing to life. So basically, with just this setup, all your combo is doing is having you lose the game, which I would not recommend doing. Now, of course, there are ways to actually take advantage of this loop occurring, and there are plenty of ways to stay alive while this loop is happening while taking your opponents out. Just keep in mind, though, that literally Junji can do this with absolutely, okay, I should say pretty much any clone. I'm sure there's some clones out there where it's like, well, no, technically body doubles in your graveyard, blah, 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 blah. Any clone that acts like the regular clone that's how it works. And actually, if you are building a deck around this card as a commander, there is a pretty simple setup for you to go infinite as well. And in order to go infinite with this commander, you would need to utilize the card Conspiracy and pretty much any sacrifice outlet like maybe Ashnod's Altar. So Conspiracy is a decently old card, so let's read its Oracle text. It says, as Conspiracy enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And a noted really important rules clarification for this card is that Affected spells, cards, and creatures lose all of their other creature types. Basically, you make it so that literally all your creatures, no matter where they are at, are a certain creature type and they are nothing else. So for this combo to work, all you have to do is choose anything other than dragon. So you could choose angel, wizard, boar, whatever you want to choose. It does not matter as long as it is not dragon. And then with any sacrifice outlet in play and your commander, you are good to go. Or to be more specific, a free sacrifice outlet like Ashnod's Altar, and of course Ashnod's Altar is a very fantastic one because it also generates you mana whenever you sacrifice the creature. It says sacrifice a creature, add colors, colors to your mana pool. Essentially the combo works in a very similar way to our clone one, but it only involves our commander because again our commander can reanimate itself because it's not a dragon now. Basically you just sacrifice Junji with Ashnod's Altar, you add colors, colors, you choose to put a target non-dragon creature card from a graveyard on the battlefield under your control, you lose two life, and again because whatever we choose, let's just say again, angel, Junji is no longer a dragon. It's an angel, so we can actually reanimate it with its own death trigger. Now again, every single time we do this loop, we are generating two more mana. So again, essentially, if it wasn't for, you know, that losing two life, we would be able to generate infinite mana. But yeah, again, like I said, there's a caveat to this entire combo because every single time we do this, we do lose two life, which obviously is extremely relevant. That being said, obviously, there are plenty of ways to still capitalize on this. For example, a very simple one are those Blood Artist type of effects like Bastion of Remembrance, Zulport Cutthroat, and Keru Bloodsucker. Bastion of Remembrance and Zulport Cutthroat essentially do the exact same thing. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So essentially, even with one of these in play, if you have the highest life total and you go off with this combo, your opponents are going to be taken out. Yes, you are losing one life each time this happens because, again, you lose two life but you also gain one life. But your opponents are also losing one life, so again, if you start off with the highest life total and you can loop this, you win. And obviously, if you've got, say again, each of these in play, you've got nothing to worry about because again, your life gain equals the amount of life that you lost, so you can just loop it infinitely. Speaking of which, Karu Bloodsucker says, whenever a creature you control with toughness for a greater dice, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Again, Junji has five toughness, so it does meet this requirement, and again, it's going to gain us the amount of life that we are losing, so this is basically just, hey, Every single time you loop this with Junji, each of your opponents lose two life and you essentially net even. And again, with these Blood Artist type of effects, there are plenty of these kinds of cards out there. So yeah, it's a pretty simple setup at the end of the day. But let's move on to yet another setup that is possible with this loop. 
Because with this loop, you can actually end up gaining infinite life pretty easily as well with cards like Angelic Chorus, Verdant Sun's Avatar, and Archon Redemption. Angelic Chorus is an enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness, and Verdant Sun's Avatar is essentially a creature that does the exact same thing. Archon of Redemption is a bit more specific. It says whenever Archon of Redemption or another creature with flying enters the battlefield, you may gain life equal to that creature's power. Regardless, at the end of the day, each of these basically do the exact same thing with Junji. When Junji comes into play, you're going to be gaining 5 life, because again, it's a 5-5. Five five. So again, though with this Junji loop, you are going to be losing 2 life when that happens, you are actually going to be gaining 5 life when it comes back into play, so you're going to be netting 3 life each time. And with infinite life, obviously, there are plenty of ways to win from there. Maybe you've got an Aetherflex Reservoir, or maybe you've got something else in play that can actually dish out damage for you. Like maybe something like Warstorm Surge, or War Ancient Strand, or even Scourge of Valkus. Warstorm Surge says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, deals damage equal to its power to any target. So again, although you are looping this and losing 2 life every single time, you get to dish out 5 damage because again, its power is 5. So if your opponent's life totals are low enough, or your life total is high enough, and you are looping this, you can actually take your opponents out with this. And the same can be said for where Ancient Shred, which basically works in the exact same way with Junji. It says whenever a creature with power 5 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may have where Ancient Shred deal 5 damage to target creature or player. And of course, if your Junji is in somewhat of a dragon tribal build, it could work with Scourge of Valkus, which says whenever it or other dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to any target where X the number of dragons you control. So if you've got enough dragons in play to dish out enough damage with this loop, that's a possibility as well. Another card to consider, though, with Junji is Death Harmonicon herself with Tesa Karlov. She has, if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Even without a combo lined up, this can still be incredibly impactful with Junji. I mean, just think about making each opponent lose 4 life and discard 4 cards on a single death trigger. Or, you know, reanimating any two non-dragon creatures at the small cost of losing four life. And actually, it's pretty early in the day, so please correct me in the comments below if I am wrong on this, but I believe you can actually choose one of each. So, making each opponent lose two life and discard two cards, and reanimating a non-dragon creature and losing two life. Again, I don't think this is like, you know, copying a spell where you have to keep the mode, because again, it's a death trigger, and you can still choose another one, but I could be wrong on that. Regardless, let's move on to other cards that immediately came to mind when I saw this new potential spoiler with Karmic Guide and Phyrexian Delver. Now, Karmic Guide is broken with a lot of things, but yeah, it could definitely be broken with Junji as well. It has, when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, essentially with any free sacrifice outlet and basically, you know, two of these triggers that basically do the exact same thing, you can keep looping your creatures, you know, Karmic Guide, then Junji, then Karmic Guide, then Junji, over and over again. Again, you are going to be losing two life each time, so keep in mind those Blood Artist effects. And in a similar, yet even more risky way, there's Phyrexian Delver. It has, when it enters the battlefield, return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You lose life field that card's converted mana cost. So now with Junji, again, you're going to be losing two life when you reanimate Phyrexian Delver. But with Phyrexian Delver, you're going to be losing five life when you reanimate Junji. Again, like I mentioned before, there are ways to negate that life loss. But yeah, that is a, uh, that's a high price to pay. One last card that I want to bring up, though, is just a very simple one that obviously is very broken with a lot of cards, but yeah, a kicked right of application on Junji could be very devastating to your opponents. It says create a token that's a copy of target creature. If this spell was kicked, create five of those tokens instead. So yeah, that's uh, five new Junjis, and again, because the legend rule is going to apply, you are going to be losing all of them, essentially. And now you get to choose the death triggers. So most likely you're going to drain your opponents for a ton and just wipe out their hands completely. And you know, maybe reanimate a creature or two while you're at it. It's going to be pretty hard for your opponents to recover after losing that much life and losing their entire hands. Though again, Red Replication is a busted card with a lot of creatures out there. That being said, yeah, again, I think this potential spoiler has a lot of potential. There are a lot of ways to break this card, and yes, some of those are risky plays, but there are ways to either mitigate the losses or to make it so that you're actually even gaining, or that you're just able to take your opponents out before you take yourself out. And of course, it is early again, and I'm sure that I missed certain combos with this card as well, because yeah, that death trigger can be pretty broken. So. In the comments below, let me know what I missed. What cards should I have brought up on this episode? And again, like I've said multiple times, this is a potential spoiler. It has not been confirmed to be an actual card. So please, please, please take everything I've said with a grain of salt. 
and come to your own conclusions. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.